Welcome to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship on this day. It is so good to gather with you in this time and in this space where we gather a little bit differently, but we still gather together as the body of Christ. One quick announcement for all of us uh, this morning, this day, is that there's still time for you to sign up for those Zoom meetings, uh, meeting and greeting times that we have. There's a couple coming up on Monday. Um, would love to see you be a part of that. Hope you are doing well. You continue to be in our prayers. And uh, hope you know that may this time of worship be a time of blessing, a blessing for you as you continue to be a blessing for others. As we gather and join for worship, I invite you to find your candle and to light it as we say these words. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Let us quiet our hearts and minds for worship. Dear friends, Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation, who comforts us in all of our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we receive from God. Amen. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death. So that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might have new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Amen. Praise be to God for the waters of baptism. Breathe in your spirit all who are gathered here and there, near and far. Breathe in your spirit into creation. Forgive us our sins and strengthen us in goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit that keeps us in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
could shout it any louder I would Fear not If I could shout it any louder I would Please join me for the prayer of the day. O God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of John. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Beloved children of God, grace and peace to you from our risen and living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please pray with me. Oh, good and gracious God, thanks so much for being present. Being present in this time of worship, in this pause in our day and in our week. Lord God, the word that I think about today as we gather is how you give, you give us confidence. You say that we will know your voice, and you are confident that we will know the voice, your voice, the voice of our Good Shepherd. And now, Lord God, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts, be holy and acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, alleluia. We continue to boldly proclaim those words of hope, and life. And yes, my friends, they are life-giving, and they are hope-giving, and they are words that we proclaim every day, boldly. They are words that they are for us, for you, for the neighbor, and for the stranger. As I think about those words, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, I think about how they do. They give us life today, tomorrow, and forever. This week I've been thinking about that word life. And I think about that word life and I wonder, how do you define life? If I were to ask you what is life? Is it, what is life? Is it purpose? Is it meaningful? How do you define life? As I think about that word life, I think about the last words in our gospel this, this day from the Gospel of John. Here again these words. I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. Abundant life. Not just life that you kind of go through the motions or you're just kind of there 
or you're just doing your thing, but it is life. And Jesus says there's something more than just life, but it is abundant. This last verse has been with me this whole week. I've been kind of dwelling with it and trying to figure out what Jesus was talking about when he says, I, have, I came so that you may have life and have it abundantly. Again, I ask you this question, how do you define life? How do you define life, especially when you put the word abundantly, abundantly in front of it? And I know we probably have a lot of different definitions if I were to ask you, and I wish we could kind of gather and have conversation about that. But in our scripture this day, from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, the Gospel writer gives us a distinct, a distinct point and clarity about Jesus' mission and ministry. As we hear again Jesus say, I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. These words tell us something, tell us something about the Good Shepherd. Good Shepherd Sunday is always the fourth Sunday after Easter, and that's where we find ourselves this week, the fourth Sunday after Easter. As we hear these words about Jesus' mission and his ministry, we also hear Jesus talk about doors and gates and sheep and bandits and how the sheep, how the sheep know the shepherd's voice. And all of this, I have come to kind of understand, has something to do with life. And it does help us define what is this life. So as I sat with these images this week of door and gate and sheep and bandits and the shepherd voice, I went back to chapter 9 in the Gospel of John, and I was reminded of the story of Jesus healing the blind man. Let me retell it in a very shortened version so you remember this story with me. Jesus was walking along, and he sees the blind man, and he goes over and strikes a conversation with him. And in the midst of that conversation, Jesus says, put some mud on your eyes, and then go down to the pool and wash your eyes. And so the man goes down and he washes and he can see. And the word gets around about what happened of this healing, of this miracle. The word gets around his community and people wonder about this. And the religious leaders at the time, they want to get to the bottom of this. And so they call the blind man in front of them and as he is called in front of them, they ask him about this experience. And the next thing you know, they've called the parents of the blind man, again, trying to get to the bottom of it and trying to understand what has happened. And then finally, the blind man is asked to come back again in front of the religious leaders. And finally, the religious don't like what they have heard from the blind man, and so they kick him out. They kind of remove him from the community. He was not a part of the community anymore. Jesus heard about what happened after the healing and after he was able to see, after going to the pool. And Jesus finds the man again and tells the man this story of doors and gates, of sheep and bandits, and the voice of the shepherd and of life. And as the man listens to this story, as we come into chapter 10, as Jesus continues to teach this story, Jesus' words become a promise, a promise of life for the blind man, and I think for today. Jesus gives this blind man a promise of new life, a new community for this man. Instead of the doors and the gates being closed, the gates are wide open for the man to come in, to come into this life-giving pasture, this life-giving pasture of belonging, life-giving pasture of purpose, life-giving pasture of relationship, and life-giving pasture of protection and promise. The doors for the blind man are swung wide open. 
He has given the freedom to be who he's called to be, a child of God, forgiven in love, and my friends held in a relationship with God. As I think about that story of the blind man, and I think about the community that John was writing to, it was also a community that had a similar story, like the blind man. It was a community that had been displaced, uprooted, had no sense of belonging, and some would say they were kind of adrift in the world. So Jesus shares this story for this community to hear of the blind man, of doors and gates of sheep and bandits, which is their story. Both the blind man and the community were in need of hope, belonging, purpose, and protection. And Jesus, Jesus offers them and gives them both. Jesus gives them hope and belonging, purpose, and protection. But at the bottom of all of that, at the bottom of all of what Jesus gives to them, as these gates were swung open wide, is a gift of relationship. A relationship that is grounded in a life-giving posture. And as is it se strange as it seems, as we think about doors that are closed, here, the doors and the gates are life-giving doors and gates. They are doors and gates that are swung open. They have no handles. They have no locks. They are just wide open. They are wide open, full, and welcome of a relationship of love and grace. And it is in that relationship, it is in that posture, that you will know that Jesus says, you will know my voice, and it is a voice of love, and it is a voice of life that the Good Shepherd gives to us and gives to the world. Jesus says, you will know my voice. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought about how there are times that it is so hard to hear the shepherd's voice. And it is how, how hard it is that our times were, we're just not sure that that is the voice of the good shepherd. But Jesus says in our, in our gospel this day that you will know my voice. My friends, Jesus says with confidence that we will know his voice the voice that sometimes is so loud and so full of love that we can shout, Amen. And then there are other times where the voice of the Good Shepherd is still, is quiet, full of comfort and peace. And we still know the voice of the Good Shepherd. And we again say, Amen. My friends, Jesus is confident that we will know that voice because that voice is rooted, rooted in a relationship, a relationship that is rooted in love. And at the ground, at the base level of this relationship, Jesus says to each one of us, you know me, you will follow me, you will rest in my voice and in this relationship. It is a voice that knows that we will fall short. Our Good Shepherd knows that we will not always hear that voice. And there will be times the Good Shepherd also knows that we will question and we will wonder about that voice. And the Good Shepherd knows that maybe all of those things packed into one as we think about the Good Shepherd's voice. In the midst of all of that, Jesus stands with the promise that is wide open. And in the promise that Jesus reminds us what he is up to. Jesus is up to protecting, providing, caring, and giving life. And in that, we respond. We respond to that 
care into that love and that relationship, we respond with trusting. We respond, we respond with listening and embracing. And maybe living our lives and thriving our li in our lives just a little bit differently. It's almost like Jesus is saying to us, you got this, and I got you. You've got this, and I've got you. When Jesus says that to us, it doesn't mean our lives are going to be easy or smooth. It does mean that God will be there with us in all of those times. When we struggle, when we worry, when there is fear, Jesus says, that good shepherd's voice says, you've got this, and I got you. And maybe that's what this whole, maybe when I ask the question about what is life, and what is this abundant life that Jesus talks about in our gospel this day? Maybe that is the life. It is a life knowing that the gates are wide open, that we are loved, that we are forgiven, that we are accepted, and that we are welcomed. Just like our neighbor and stranger gets that same welcome and love and acceptance that we received. And it is a life again that we hear Jesus say, you've got this, I've got you. And I think in this time and in this space that we are all walking with, that Jesus also says one other thing to us. That Jesus has us and that we will, we will get through this. Jesus has us and we will get through this. That's the voice of the Good Shepherd. The voice of the Good Shepherd that comes. Sometimes it comes so loudly and clearly, and other times it comes so quietly. But the voice of the Good Shepherd is there. A voice of promise and a voice of life. Not just life, but abundant life. So know that Jesus says to you today, you've got this. And I've got you. And Jesus also says, Jesus has us, and we'll get through this. Amen. As we worship in our homes, we are united by God's promises of hope and love. We pray for the church, the earth, the world, and all who are in need. Come to the church. Come to your people. Come to all who are weary. Give us faith to know your loving presence is among us. Open the scriptures to us and nourish us with the promise that you are staying with us during this time of uncertainty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Come to the earth, creating God. Renew landscapes, cleanse the waters, and protect the animals. 
Save your people, especially at this time, from destructive storms and floods. Keep all viruses in check for the sake of your beloved humans. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our prayer. Come to the nations, God of peace. Preserve all peoples from war and violence. Guide the leaders of nations, our president, our governors, and our legislators toward wise decisions in struggling against the virus and struggling with impacts on the economy. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Come, great healer and physician, to all who suffer from the virus. Comfort the mourners, heal the sick, sustain every medical worker, empower those researchers who are seeking a vaccine, stay with us and accompany all those who are isolated or afraid. Give to those with prior ailments and chronic disease their necessary medical care. Especially we pray for those that are on our prayer list and on our hearts and minds this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our prayer. Come, God of the harvest, uphold farmers, ranchers, migrant workers, and all who produce, package, and market our food. Guard the health of those who work at grocery stores. Bless the efforts of local food banks and all who are working to keep those in need fed. Continue to be with school districts as they continue to feed our neighborhood kids and youth who have relied on food given out at school. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. Come, faith God, come as we pray these prayers and other prayers that are raised to you. Amen. Would you join me in praying the prayer that our Savior taught us to pray? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As you continue to be the church where you are and what you are doing, go and serve the Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. Amen.